Today, I'm taking a look at two of the best marathon racers of the year, the Nike Alpha Fly and the Endorphin Speed. Thirteen point one miles for the workout today, which included a warm up, a cool down, and three times three mile reps at marathon power with three minutes of rest in between. Today I was running with the Endorphin Speed, but I also ran the exact same workout earlier this week in the Nike Alpha Fly, so I can compare these two shoes head to head. But before I give you my thoughts on these two shoes on the exact same workout in the same week. I do want to go over some disclosures. Both of these shoes were shoes that I purchased with my own money. No one sent them to me or was paying me to make this video. And no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the Endorphin Speed and the Nike Alpha Fly. First, let's talk about the Alpha Fly. What we have here is 36 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot with Zumex foam, a carbon fiber plate, and these two giant airbags underneath. The shoe has a four millimeter drop resulting in 40 millimeters of stack height in the heel, which is at the max allowable height for world athletics rules for a road marathon. This is all paired with a super lightweight Adam knit upper with minimal structure in the heel, a little bit of a bumper pad in the back to keep your ankle locked down, just the tiniest bit of support in the toes. And all this comes in at a very light 7.4 ounces, which is Hard to believe for a shoe that's this large. This is probably one of the biggest shoes I've ever raced in. And yet it still comes in at that very light weight and they still managed to put in not only one, but two pull tabs on this shoe. So kudos to this engineering marvel. Now all these pieces give what I feel like is the formula for the best of the super marathon shoes, which is a nice and cushioned material of a midsole that squishes when you step into it. But there are rigid elements within the shoe. And in this case, it's that carbon fiber plate and this double airbag that's going to be right underneath the pads of your foot that are compressed and loaded when you step down. So that way all the 
impact is absorbed by that soft foam, the plate and the, in this case, the airbags get loaded. And then when you push off, everything snaps back and all resulting in a really powerful surge of a push that you get with each stride. Now let's take a look at the endorphin speed. In the endorphin speed, we've got 25 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot, which makes it pretty tall for a marathon racer. Although if you think about it, it's one third less stack height compared to the Alpha Fly. The midsole foam that's in this shoe though is different. It's not Zoom X foam, it's Power Run PB, which is a new formulation from Saucony for this year. It's a material that looks like Boost and in a lot of ways behaves like Boost, but it also seems to be lighter and better than Boost is. In my opinion, it's the Boost shoe that Adidas should have made, but never did. This shoe doesn't have a carbon fiber plate though and doesn't have an airbag. What it has instead is a nylon, I think they call it a plate, shank, whatever you wanna call it. There is a rigid element in it, but it's not as stiff as carbon fiber, but it still gives you that sense of when you're stepping down into the shoe, the Power Run PB foam is absorbing impact when your foot hits the ground, that nylon plate is getting compressed. And then as you push off, everything snaps back and gives you that push off sensation. The upper on the endorphin speed, I think is just absolutely fantastic. You've got a dual layer mesh here that is lightweight, breathable, yet keeps everything locked down and is also super comfortable. There's a tiny bit of padding over in the part of the heel. that's gonna touch the back of your foot. There is a little bit of support in the heel cup here, but not nearly as rigid as what's in the back of the Alpha Flight, although it does seem to cover a bit of a larger area. All this comes in at a weight of 7.8 ounces, making it a little bit heavy for a racer, but still definitely feels very lightweight on foot. And even for a shoe that does have 25 millimeters of stack height in the front, it feels like it's very low to the ground. And I feel like I'm getting a proper load onto that nylon plate and getting that strong push off sensation with this shoe as well. So what was it like to take each of these marathon racing shoes out for this workout where I'm simulating some marathon miles? Well, the Alpha Fly, I definitely got that squish that I'm looking for when I'm thinking about a marathon super shoe and this carbon fiber plate and Zuma airbag combination definitely gives you kind of like that double carbon kind of feel. So I feel like it has twice the kind of push off sensation that you're getting from a normal carbon fiber plated shoe. And I definitely find myself pulling back a lot trying to stay within that marathon power or that marathon effort for the course of these nine marathon miles in total. One of the things that I've been experiencing that hasn't been so great in the Alpha Fly as I've been putting more miles into it is that it seems to be crunching up my toes. This week, by the end of this run, I developed a blister on my left kind of like ring toe. My left pinky toe was all kind of jammed up. It felt super tender and a little bit swollen. And my right big toe, which is tends to be the toe that takes the brunt of the damage whenever I run in any vapor fly shoe, was throbbing with pain for the entire day. It actually like, I noticed it when I was trying to lay down to go to bed at night. And by the following day, I didn't quite have a black toenail, but it was kind of like a purple toenail. And even now, four or five days later, it's still a little bit discolored. So it definitely took its toll on my toes, but otherwise it was really easy on the body. It was really easy to hit those marathon paces. And overall my body felt like it could recover other than toes. The rest of my body felt like it handled the workout really well and it could recover for another run the next day really relatively easily. This is a shoe where it can certainly go the marathon distance. And I also just feel like it has that ability to maintain that like springy, powerful feel throughout the entire run. I just don't feel like there's any power fade throughout the entire run when you're running with a shoe like the Alpha Fly. It's absolutely amazing. Now with the endorphin speed for today, let's start with kind of that power fade that I was mentioning. I don't know if it's because of the fact that this has a nylon play or if it just has something to do with the Power Run PB that's in here and the way that foam behaves, but I do feel like I can certainly take this shoe to the marathon distance. In fact, I did take it to the marathon distance over the summer and beyond. I ran a 30 mile run in this shoe and I absolutely loved it there. But I do feel like the miles add up. So your feet do kind of take a beating still. It's not nearly as bad as some of the shoes from like kind of the pre-carbon fiber plate era, but I am feeling a little bit of fatigue over the course of those longer miles when I'm running in this shoe. Now, I'd still say that it probably is at the higher end of performance in terms of being able to stay fresh for as long as possible, but compared to the seeming infinite comfort of the Alpha Fly, I do notice that my feet are feeling it just a little bit in the endorphin speed. 
Otherwise, I'm absolutely loving the combination of the Power Run PB and that nylon plate. I just feel like it's tuned really well for me. There's been other shoes that I've run in where I feel like the carbon fiber is too stiff, or maybe I'm not running fast enough or pushing off hard enough to really get the full benefit of what's getting put into the shoe. For me, when I'm running in the endorphin speed, I feel like I'm using the entire shoe and not just from like a geometric perspective. I feel like I'm getting every ounce of power that's in it, or I guess watt of power that's in this shoe. And I feel like I'm really utilizing it to the fullest. In fact, when comparing the splits, and I know it's not the most scientific of comparisons, even if I run the same workout, same route, same relatively similar conditions in the same week, but to the extent that I am gonna compare those two, the nine marathon miles total that I ran in the endorphin speed were coming in at an average of about seven minutes, 13 seconds per mile, which is just a hair under BQ pace for me. The Alpha Fly, on the other hand, came in at seven minutes and 16 seconds per mile on average for the nine marathon miles. Now, one little caveat though, in terms of looking at the numbers, other than the fact that this is an extremely small sample set, is that I did have to stop and wait for traffic at one point while I was in my work phase in the Alpha Fly. That probably was like maybe a five to 10 second delay. That being said, let's talk about after the workout. I feel like after the workout, my body felt fresher or it felt like it took less out of me to run this particular workout when I was running in the endorphin speed. And that's absolutely amazing, especially when you consider the fact that this shoe is $160. This shoe is $275. Now, when it comes to marathon racers, I'm certainly not gonna make a dollars per mile comparison, but I just think that it's an absolutely amazing feat what they've done with this shoe for 160 bucks. Fascinating. Here's the other thing that I'll say about the endorphin speed. I think the endorphin speed pretty much tops out at half marathon paces. I think it's that nylon plate uh, that's not gonna be rigid enough if you're going to say a 10 mile race or a 10K. I just don't think that the endorphin speed is gonna give you enough kind of like pushback. At that point, you're pushing hard enough where you might be overloading that nylon plate. And so I feel like there's gonna be a little bit left to be desired at some of those faster paces. And you might wanna reach for the Endorphin Pro if those are distances that you're gonna be racing at more frequently, or if you're a more powerful runner than I am. So while I mentioned that I love the fact that I feel like I'm getting every little bit out of the Endorphin Speed, I also feel like I'm getting near to kind of like bumping up at the top end of what the endorphin speed and I can do together. So that's just something else to keep in mind. So when it comes down to which of these two shoes would I love to race in for my next marathon, it is extremely close. And I think based purely on performance, I'm gonna have to give it to the Alpha Fly. I just think that because of the fact that there isn't that power fade and there's just so much cushion underfoot and that Zoom X foam that I love, I think I have to give it to the Alpha Fly, but it's still at the same time I'm thinking 160 bucks. No matter which shoe you're looking at when you're looking at these two shoes, you're gonna have a fantastic time racing. So those are my thoughts on the Alpha Fly versus the Endorphin Speed. The Alpha Fly does take it by a hair. Let me know in the comments what you guys think is the better shoe if you've run in both of these shoes. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Or if you have any questions, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do every day on YouTube, 3 p.m. Central Time. I'd love to talk to you guys about it more there. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?